Every PA looks a little different depending on the gig, the room, and even the band. Today, CJ and I are walking you through our setup, not just to show you what's in the air, but to share the little choices and tricks along the way that make it all work. Yeah, why don't you follow me? All right, we've got the JBL SRX 900 system up here, the 910's in the air. Yep, we have 10 per side with six front fills across the front of the 906s. and nine of the JBL subs. The subs are under the stage here. So like I said, we have the uh, JBL subs under the stage because there's not room anywhere else for them once the uh, barricade gets in here. So I have these delayed into an arc and there's nine of the SRX 928S subs under here. Now, why do you delay the subs? The subs are delayed into an arc because that actually widens the coverage pattern. It probably takes away a little bit of maybe the length. I don't know about that, but as far as the overall coverage, it evens out the subs across the room. Helps with nulls and cancellations and... And eliminates... Well, putting them in the center like this was going to eliminate Power Alley anyway, but then spreading them out by delay widens the coverage area. So. Interesting. How many in 906 is six? Six, yep. With the ability to do more. Of course, this makes sure the front row can hear. So monitor world over here. Try to keep a clean little work area. Cable ramps. We don't want anybody tripping. Clean work area. The master Elijah putting mics on stands. Hey, say hi, Elijah. Hi. And we have the uh, wing compact here today in monitor land with the good old Sennheiser uh, in-ears. How many mixes are we gonna to use today or uh, tomorrow? Five, six with the Q. Then I got a couple extra for spares. All right, let's take a look at the uh, back side of the uh, console and what we have going on here. So we're not using any of the uh, local inputs on the compact. Oh no, or are you using uh, some? I'm using a couple for crowd mics and a uh, iPod cable and a talkback microphone. Uh, because our band is all in-ears, we will set up a couple crowd mics so they don't feel totally cut off from the crowd. So we have a... They won't have to take their earbuds out. They'll be able to hear a little bit of room noise, people cheering at them. People scream and play one more song. There you one go. Song. And we got stage left, stage right. Stage left, stage right. And they'll be paying left and right in their ears. All right. Then where everything else is AES. All of our outputs will be off of our DL32 box down here at the bottom. All of our in ears will be stereo. All right, let's talk a little more about the split and how we do this. Yeah, so we have a 32 channel analog snake here that splits in between two DL32s. And so. Go ahead and point the DL32 out because I see there's one. This is the monitor, monitor side of the DL32. And then there's a front of house DL32 up here on top of our ear rack. And that is hooked directly to me at front of house with AES 50, correct? Yep. So one cap five runs from back here to front of house. And one short cap five jumps from my DL32 to my console, which gives us separate preamps, separate EQs, all that good stuff. No gain sharing. No gain sharing. We don't like that. Makes life easier. Yeah. Typical audio, guys. We don't like to share. 
In most cases, we'll know the band's needs because they will already have provided us with an input list and a stage plot during the advance of the show. So let's look at some tips for efficiency. So here we got uh, one of our sub snakes, which has been pre-labeled. And then I'm gonna find the tails here and patch them into the corresponding inputs on our splitter. So piano left, I believe is 17. So one, it's on here somewhere right here. One and two, we'll start at 17. And you've got your sub snakes all pre-labeled like this. All the sub snakes are pre-labeled. So that way when the band shows up, I just drag my boxes out to where they need to land and start patching the deck. Speaking of efficiency, the Wing Compact makes efficient use of limited stage space. So with this band that's opening up for Kit Moore, we have five stereo mixes, uh, but now with the new firmware updates, uh, being able to use the matrixes, you can do uh, 20 stereo mixes. 24 actually. 24 stereo mixes. Cause 16 buses and eight matrices. 16 plus eight. That, that's a good amount of mixes. Uh, and that's stereo. Yeah, all stereo. And the other thing, the wind compact takes a very little real estate up here. Takes very little space. All right, so we're talking about the uh, Sennheiser ear rack here, which has the eight stereo ear mixes in it. You want to talk a little bit about the RF venue, the antenna combiner here? Yeah, so we have everything daisy chain into that. And uh, we have one antenna here. Uh, and then when tours show up, we will try to correspond with them for RF frequencies. That way we're not stepping on each other. And instead of a big cable farm or an antenna farm, we just have one antenna. One antenna. And goes to the RF venue and all the Sennheisers take an antenna feed from the back of the RF venue, and that's essentially it. It, it even powers the units. They don't even need their yep. own power. All right, CJ, let's talk about how you steer the PA and uh, keep the cabinets focused where the cabinets are supposed to go. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Uh, we use uh, the famous tie line rope, and we tie around our pins at the bottom of our arrays and we tie one on each side back to this pole and we can use this to steer the PA how we need it to, to point. Just slide the knots basic, basically? Yep, you slide the knot down or up and the PA will turn in and out. So what we're doing now, we've got most of our stuff ready to go for the band to come in tomorrow and plug in or bands because we have the opener and the headliner. Stage is clean. Our cable pass right now are off the stage. Yeah, we want as clean of a stage as we can when a tour rolls in. That way they're not tripping or fussing over anything. And we have our cable ramps here for what little bit we did have to have on stage now. So stage right over here, there's gonna be big guitar worlds and uh, a bunch of big cases that come in and out. So what we do is we run a cable pick so we can keep our fly looms up and out of the way. So nobody has to roll over anything. And there's plenty of workspace for a guitar world. Uh, sometimes you'll get a monitor world on that side of stage sometimes. And that just helps us stay out of the way. All right, we're down here off, I uh, guess we're off stage left. Uh, this is kind of your world with all the uh, microphones and everything. So you want to take a look at our mic case and uh, just a quick overview of what's going on here. Yep. So we got a work box here. It's got mic clips. It's got dynamic mics, vocals, SM58s, 57s. A little more fancy mics, uh, a couple more kick drum mics, a couple overheads. Then we got some more specialty mics, Beta 91s, 98s, 604s, a bunch of clip-ons. I want to point out that says bag mics. 
not bad mics. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in bags in that drawer, mostly. And down here, we have a bunch of DIs. And as Al stated, J48's his favorite, which uh, I would have to agree that's a good one. All right, on this side over here, which we have the exact same thing on the other side, is the distribution rack for the uh, JBL 900s. Now, we do have the sub distribution here because we're using nine subs, nine double 18 subs under the stage. And essentially, each side's drive lines and power comes to this rack. And then we bring power to it. We bring drive lines from front of house. The, they go across the stage to pick up both stage left and stage right. And pretty much how we do it. That's how we get the uh, signal to the uh, JBLs. And it also has the networking in it too. So there's a loom of cable that has networking, audio, and power that run up to the uh, cabinets up here on each side. So we have a ramp here. That's one way that equipment will go be getting on the stage. And then if needed, there's a forklift back there. And there's an opening right now in the railing for the forklift. But by showtime, the railing will go back up. So here is the audio disconnect. This is where all of our power comes from. This is a uh, 200 amp service. Three phase. Three phase. Uh, tails come down here where we connect, uh, which runs all the way across stage into our distro where we can uh, give people power. Including ourselves. Yep. And then Lighting World has its own farther down and behind you there yep. if you want to turn around. Yeah, and we know it's lighting yep. because it says so. And there's a light on it. <laughs> Probably a coincidence. I'll bet you a lighting guy installed this. And it's the same thing, It's yeah. except it's 400 amps, three phase. A lot more juice. So the way the SL320 is configured, we've got a downstage truss for lighting, a midstage truss for lighting, and an upstage truss. And I believe the band is bringing their own ground package for lighting. Uh, so I don't think we're using any of our ground stuff. I could be wrong because Lighting guys may have other ideas, but you can see the truss, PA, camera. As a matter of fact, right there in the center is a camera, one of the robo cams, PTZ. Of course, there's also the other end of the Ethercon cable. So let's take a look at front of house. All right, so first off here front of house, we've got the full size wing today. And we have a switcher over here. So if you wonder how we switch between a headliner's console and the opening console and the house console, if we're running any videos and MCs or anything, it's all done through the switcher here. CJ, can you uh, point some things out there? Yeah, so uh, the headliner is asking me for the PA, so I'm gonna turn his desk on and I'm gonna turn the house desk off. Simple as that. Pretty simple what you see back here. We're using this uh, Cat5. So we've got an analog to Cat5 back here, staying all in the analog domain. And that is our drive line to send all of this to front of house. And then this would be the left and right for another console coming in. We're gonna mic in from back here if we want. And then there's four. I don't know if you can see these in here, but two sets of four that feed the comp the consoles feed into to feed into the switcher. So a little update, we went ahead and added our shout boxes at front of house and monitor world, which lets the talkbacks at front of house and monitor world mics talk to each other and to the band. So there's one of these front of house and one in monitor world. So after the headliner is loaded in and sound checked, the opener gets the stage. You guys find something? Yeah, I got them in there. 
Yeah, that got both uh, 9 and 10, and both kick lines are working. Cool. Thank you. Following the sound check, there's a bit of downtime, and then it's showtime. Then it's time to strike the opener. The headliner takes the stage. Strike the headliner and strike the full production. These Hollyland lobs make these style of videos possible now. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a walkthrough of the lighting rig. This video is a deep dive into the JBL SRX 900 rig. And this video is a sound check in action. There are affiliate links in the text below. There are video links in the text below. Likes and subscribes always appreciated. And I will see you next time.